Lord Farmers Market attendees. What a beautiful day the Lord has given us today. The, the Bible speaks of the very first learner, uh, line of the Bible. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So what we see there is in the beginning God already was. God is. God stands outside of time. God stands outside of time, having created time. Time being a created thing with, with the sun and the moon, days, weeks, months, years. Time being a created thing and God having created all things, he created time. And in the beginning, God, the word there for God is Elohim. And that is a plural word in the Hebrew. So what we see in the very first line of the Bible is the triune God. In the beginning, God, the triune God, created the heavens and the earth. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father spoke, God the Son created, and God the Holy Spirit empowered. So in the beginning, God created. And with God, we see in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, theos, a singular word, so we have a Word that's with God, and the Word was God. And who that Word is, we see in John 1.14, was God the Son who became flesh and dwelt among us. So many people understand that Jesus Christ came to live on this earth, born of a Virgin Mary. Some people's religion has them to understand that Jesus is God. God eternal. Other people's religion have, have it to believe that Jesus is a created being, the firstborn of all creation, as they would misquote or misunderstand the scriptures. Implying that and believing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was a is or was a created being, that when he was born of the of water from Mary's womb was when he was created. But what we just looked at in John 1 1 and Genesis 1 is God the Son is eternal. God the Son created all things. He created all things, seen and unseen. So this, this eternal God, God the Son, most people understand came to live in the flesh. Truly God and truly man. The word for that in, in Christendom is the incarnation. Incarnation coming from a Greek word in, n, which means in, and kario, flesh, in the flesh. So God the Son came to live in the flesh. So God the Son came to live in the flesh, which, which many people would, would accept in their minds. And many people I then talk to and ask the question, why did God the Son come in the flesh? What I would have you to think about as you hear my voice this morning is, if you believe God the Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God himself, came to live in the flesh, I would have you ask yourself why. Why did Jesus come to live in the flesh? Why did God the Son, the God outside of time, acquiesce or condescend and step into time and live fully man and die as a man, live as a man and die as a man. Why the incarnation? Many people's theology believes that Jesus came to show us how to live. And while he lived a perfectly sinless life, and for Christians, he is our model of life. So indeed, he is an example we're to follow as Christians. He, he did not come to show us how to live. That's not why he came. Many people's theology would say, God the Son, Jesus Christ, came to give us a better life now. That, that he came in order to heal the world of disease and poverty. And while Jesus did heal many people of diseases, even raising people from the dead, he never improved someone's financial stance, so he did not come in any sense even to um, decrease poverty, even the miracles he did. 
But while he did heal and raise her dead, that's not why he came. You see, in, in the book of Matthew, we see where Joseph was betrothed to Mary. And Mary was to be found with child. By the Holy Spirit, Mary was impregnated. And by the way, for any of my Catholic friends, the Immaculate Conception has to do with Jesus Christ being conceived in Mary by the Holy Spirit without sin. It does not have to do with Mary being sinlessly conceived. So Jesus was in Mary's womb, found to be with child, Joseph was engaged to her, or betrothed to her, and because Joseph was a kind man, knowing that she was pregnant, and the only way people get pregnant is to have intercourse between a man and a woman, his assumption was she had done that. She had known a man. And the Spirit came and told Joseph, Mary's been with no man. Mary has conceived the child of the Holy Spirit. And she then... He then, the, 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 the angel of the Lord then tells Joseph this, he says, She will bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus, because he will heal the world of all diseases. Not what the Bible says. Because he will give you a better life now. Not what the Bible says. It says you shall call his name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The reason Jesus Christ, God the Son, came to live as a man was to live a perfectly sinless life. A life where he completely fulfilled the law of God. The name Jesus, actually in English is Jesus, in the Greek is Jesus, Jesus, in the Hebrew is Yeshua. And what the word actually means is God is salvation. God is salvation. So, so Christ Jesus, Jesus, the name actually means something. The name means God is salvation. The name does not mean God is physical healing. It does not mean God is uh, health. It doesn't mean God is wealth. It means God is salvation. And why do we need salvation? We need salvation because we, like God, have a soul that will never die. And we, in our flesh, we sin against God. We are sin. We live our lives in continual sin against God. And God said when he created man, be holy as I am holy. He, he, his commands to us, which we all have written in our heart, is live to the standards that I have set. And the standards that God has set is perfection. And none of us in our flesh live perfect lives. And we know of a sacrificial system. Maybe you've heard of that in the Old Testament of bulls and goats. And the blood had to be shed to pay for sin. But that blood did not appease the wrath of God. So Jesus came to live in the flesh to live as a man, fully man, tempted in every way, and then to die a sinner's death on the cross under the wrath of the Father. And he did that so that those of us who had put our faith and trust in him, for the eternal salvation of our souls, because of the sin we have against him, we would then live forever with him in glory. But if you're Jesus that you believe in, God is salvation, came for other reasons then you don't know Christ if you believe that Jesus came to heal all diseases then you don't know Christ you don't know your predicament his name Christ Jesus the Lord Christ the Mashiach the Messiah the fulfillment of all the old anointed Old Testament prophets priests and kings Christ Jesus God is salvation the Lord Kurios Ruler, owner, master. So you have God the Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, coming for a specific purpose, and the purpose was to save his people from their sins. Do not make the mistake, because many of you believe that Jesus died for everyone. 
He did not die for everyone. He died for those that would believe on him for the forgiveness of their sins against the Holy God. He came to live in the flesh because he, he lived as a man, tempted in every way and without sin. So if your Jesus that you believe in is a different Jesus that would have come for any other purpose to, to give a better life now, the lie of a heretic like Joel Osteen, that would preach no sin and repentance, that would only preach a better life now, he's preaching a false Jesus. Anyone who's preaching a Jesus that, that wants you to prosper financially is preaching a false Jesus. When Jesus was in the flesh, incarnate, he was tempted in the desert by Satan. And what Satan tempted him with was, he said, bow down and worship me and I will give you all of this. And all of this was worldly wealth, land, prestige, and power. So Satan promises things of the earth. Whereas the scriptures teach us that God has given his people all the blessings in the heavenly places. So anyone who preaches to you a Jesus to give you a better life now is preaching on behalf of Satan. Anyone who preaches a Jesus that will give you eternal life and glory, that is preaching a message that comes from God. We're here today not to promise you a Jesus that will fix your life. Not to promise you a Jesus will heal your diseases. We are here to preach the Jesus Christ of the scriptures who came to save his people from their sins. Those that would see their sinfulness, see their wretchedness, see their lack of perfection. Not count on their ability to do better and to do right to get them right with God. But they would see that they're hopeless, dead in their sins in need of a savior and his name is Jesus Christ his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth fully man fully God incarnate the God of the universe came into time lived in time suffered a sinner's death under the wrath of God to be the atonement for our sins for those who would believe on him so many people will walk by today and say I have a relationship with Jesus ask yourself what is your relationship with Jesus? Is he your get out of hell free card? Is he give me a better life now? Is God a genie that you rub the bottle to get what you want? Or is the Jesus that you believe in the, one, the sinless, perfect lamb of God who died to pay for the sins that you commit each and every day? That is Jesus. Joseph was to name him Jesus because he would save people from their sins. Do not be deceived who Christ is, who Jesus Christ is. He is a sinless Savior that died to save his people from the penalty and the power of sin in their life. He is not the Jesus that died that you could remain in your sins. He is not the Jesus that died that would heal your diseases. He is the, the God, the Son, Jesus of Nazareth, who lived a perfect life and died a sinner's death to save you from you, the consequences of your sin and the power of your sin. Jesus Christ in the flesh said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So if your Jesus is a Jesus that died so that you could go on sinning willfully, you don't know Christ. He didn't die so we could go on sinning willfully. He died that our sins would be forgiven. And, and when we put our faith and trust in him, we believe, we believe in him and that and God gives us a new heart with new desires that has us turn away from our sinfulness. What Jesus is it that you know if you claim to know Jesus? The one who died to save sinners from their sin or the one who died to give you a better life now? God never promises a better life now. He promises eternity in glory for those who would put their faith and trust in Christ. Today is the day of salvation. Please come talk to us. Ask us questions. Engage. There's nothing more important today for you than to know the risen Lord, King Jesus. Thank you. Amen, Pastor.